guys and welcome to DSSG Nation. So if this is your first time watching the video from DSSG Nation, do make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell button so we can notify you whenever we create any video. So today we are going to be talking about your information. So pick your paper and your pen and let's get started. Hi guys. So I said we are going to be talking about euro information. So euro poi air six. Now the word euro is denotes euro, and the word poi air six means production. So if you say euro poi air six, it means euro production. A simple definition you can just say. This is a process of urine formation, as simple as that. So, this urine formation or urine production, it has three stages. So, it has how many stages? Three stages. So, the first one is called filtration. Filtration. So, the second stage is called reabsorption. And the final stage is called secretion. Secretion. So, what is the meaning of filtration? What is the meaning of reabsorption? And what is the meaning of secretion? Now, before we proceed, I would like to give you a candid advice. If you are yet to watch our video on the nephron, I'm going to drop a link up ahead, so make sure you check it. Because if you don't understand the nephron, you are going to have a hard time getting what we mean by urepoiesis. So, you won't be able to understand it perfectly. So, let me just drop the board and start with what? With filtration. So, Stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. So let's start with filtration. Filtration. Now, this filtration, it happens or it occurs in the renal corpuscle. So what is the meaning of the Werner corpuscle? So I'm going to bring in a diagram of the Werner corpuscle. Now, the Werner corpuscle is the combination of what? It is the combination of the cup-shaped glomerulus, so the glomerulus, sorry, the glomerular capsule rather, and the glomerulus itself. Glomerulus itself. So the glomerulus. So, here is the word, the renal corpuscle. So, combination of these two structures is called the renal corpuscle. So, go and check the nephron, you are going to get a better understanding of the renal corpuscle. So, renal corpuscle is the combination of this structure, this cup shaped structure called the glomerular capsule. Glomerular capsule. So, why is it called the glomerular capsule? Because it encapsulates. It does what? It encapsulates the glomerulus so here is the glomerulus so this is the word the glomerulus glomerulus now infiltration what used to happen we know that this structure here is called the afferent arterial so make sure you make sure you check the nephron so you will understand everything i'm talking about right here so from the afferent arterial blood is going to enter into the words into the glomerulus so this structure right here is the glomerulus and don't forget, while discussing the nephron, we said the glomerulus, it looks like a sheave. So which means it has pores. It has what? Pores, which is O's. So it, it has a lot of O's. And that is because it is a capillary bed. It's a form of what? A form of capillary bed. So we said it is a fenestrated capillary bed. Now, when blood reaches the site, due to the presence of these pores, these O's, some things are going to be filtered. And that is where the word filtration comes in. So, some things are going to escape into the what? Into this glomerular capsule, also called the Bowman capsule. So, some things are going to do what? They are going to escape. So, and those constituents, those constituents are called the filtrate. Fill what? Filtrate. 
So the filtrate is going to escape through the pores of what? The pores of the glomerulus. But there are some things that are bigger that won't be able to escape. And those ones are the blood cells. So the blood what? The blood cells and plasma protein. Plasma protein. So they are just going to do what? They are going to move out through the what? Through the efferent arterial. So they are going to move out of the what? Of the glomerulus through the efferent arterial. Now a quick recap. Confiltration. Blood coming from the afferent arterial is going to be conveyed towards the what? Towards the glomerulus. And the glomerulus being a capillary bed is going to do what? It's going to allow filtrate, that is, substances that have small molecular size. So it will allow them to do it, to escape into the Bowman capsule or the glomerular capsule below. And those escape, those constituents are called the filtrate. While the blood cells and the plasma protein are going to escape or are going to be conveyed away from the what? From the glomerulus into the what? Into the blood stream. So as simple as that. So what are the filtrates within the what? Within the glomerular capsule. What are those things? That are capable of escaping away from the what? From the blood. So let's start listing them. So let me clean the blood and then I will come with the word the filtrate and then the constituents remain in the blood. So stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. So I said I'm going to come with the words, the filtrate and then the constituents remaining in the blood constituents remaining in the blood in the blood so let's tabulate tabulate now the filtrate so those things that are able to escape from the blood through the capillary pores so the acronym i give to them is mac Mark, Ort, and then Uj. So that is the acronym. So the M is minerals. Minerals will be able to escape. Then the A is amino acid. So amino acid will be able to escape. The C is creatinine. So creatinine will be able to escape as well. The K is ketones. You can call them keto acid as well. So the H is hormones. Some hormones. So the U is urea or uric acid. So the T is toxin. So the W is water. The second U will be urea now. And then the G is glucose. And the S, some drugs. Some drugs. So that is what? That is the filtrate. Or let me say those are the filtrates rather. So they will be able to do what? They will be able to escape from the what? From the blood. So other things that will escape are the chloride. Chloride. So the phosphate. So and so on and so forth. So for the constituents remaining in the blood, those ones that won't be able to be to, 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 to be filtered from the glomerulus. So the acronym is spell. Spell. So the S, some drug. Some drug. The P, plasma protein. Plasma protein. So the second P, that is platelets. So platelets, then E, erythrocytes, erythrocytes, and then the L is leukocytes. So if you take a careful look at these, you will realize that the leukocytes, the erythrocytes, the platelets, and the plasma protein, they are still under what? They are still under blood. So the blood won't be able to get out of what? Of the urine. So it's abnormal for someone to be doing what? To be passing blood out through the urine. So, the leukocyte is red blood cell, which is part of the blood. The erythrocyte is red blood cell, part of the blood. The platelet is part of the blood, so the, 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 the blood as well. Actually, the thrombocyte, I think. So, then the plasma protein, part of the blood as well. So, then the last thing is some drug. And that is that for the what? For the filtration. So, let's go to the second stage called reabsorption. So, stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. So let's go to reabsorption. Reabsorption. Now, this reabsorption, a simple definition, you can just say it is the process by which the filtrate 
is altered during its passage through the renal tubule as simple as that so a quick recap it is a what a process by which the filtrate is altered during its passage through the what through the renal tubule so what's the meaning of that so let me start explaining that so to do that we are going to bring in our renal tubule the second part of the nephron so i think you remember from our previous video the nephron has two parts the what the renal corpus and the renal tubule so the renal corpus is mainly for filtration while the renal tubule is mainly for what reabsorption now the renal tubule starts from the what from the proximal convoluted tubule So, this is the word, the renal tubule. Now, for the absorption, I've given you the definition. So, you start with what? With what these different parts are absorbing. So, from the proximal convoluted tube, we know that it is the major site of reabsorption. And that is because it has a numerous number of what? Microvilli. So, it reabsorbs what? It reabsorbs. Um, so, okay, the, 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 the feature to be running downward like this on a nose. But doing its passage through the renal tube, so there's going to be reabsorption. So part of those things that is going to be reabsorbed is the glucose. Glucose. So apart from that, the amino acids will be reabsorbed. Amino acids, so they are going back into the blood. So after that, we have the water, we have the vitamins. Vitamin. So we have electrolytes and water. Electrolytes and then water. So all those things are going to be what? They are going to be reabsorbed back into the what? Into the bloodstream. So back into the bloodstream. So that is actually the not convoluted to me. Now, to the loop of Enli, so the U-shaped part. So it's going to reabsorb what? It's going to reabsorb our 19, 20, 11, 12. I think you still remember this. If you don't, just make sure you go back to our, 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 our video on Nephron. So now, we are going to eat the, um, the loop of Enli rather. I'm sorry about that. The loop of Enli is going to reabsorb sodium, magnesium, potassium, so that is K, and then calcium, Ca, together with chloride and water. So chloride and what? Chloride and water. So they are going to come back into the what? They are going to come back into the blood stream. So after that, this is the what? The distal convoluted tube. So the function of the distal convoluted tube is to do what? Is to reabsorb. So, and it's going to reabsorb what? It's going to reabsorb sodium chloride. So, um, potassium as well. Potassium. So, and some calcium as well. So, it's going to reabsorb it back into the what? Back into the blood stream. And finally, for the collecting dot. I said the collecting dot it has two groups of cells. So I said the first one is called the principal cell and the other one called the intercalated cells. So the principal cell is going to reabsorb the sodium and what? The sodium and water. So and that is that for what? That is that for reabsorption under the what? Under the nephron. So while talking about reabsorption, after talking about the definition, you come with different parts of the nephron and what they do what and what they reabsorb. And after that, we are going to talk about three hormones that also contribute to what? That also contribute to reabsorption. So their acronym is APA. So this A is antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone. So and what's the meaning of that? Just what the nephron you are going to understand. So this antidiuretic hormone is going to do what? It's going to reabsorb water. So it's going to reabsorb what? Water. But this P, it is parathormone. Parathormone. Moon. So the function is to reabsorb calcium. So the function is to reabsorb what? Is to reabsorb calcium. And finally, the A here is aldosterone. Aldosterone. So the function of the aldosterone is to reabsorb sodium. And that is that for reabsorption. So finally, we used to use a sentence to mark the end of the absorption. And that sentence says the maximum capacity of the kidney to reabsorb is called dash so that dash is renal threshold renal what? renal threshold or you call it transport maximum 
transport what? Transport maximum. So that is that for what? For reabsorption. So the quick recap for reabsorption is just the process by which the filtrate is altered during its passage through the what? Through the renal tubule. And then you say the proximal convoluted tubule is the main site of reabsorption because it contains numerous microvilli. And if you absorb all these, then you move that to the loop of Henle. You say it reabsorbs all these, and then to the distal convoluted tubule, it reabsorbs all these, and then to your collecting dots, it reabsorbs sodium and water. Then you talk about the three hormones that contribute to what? That contribute to reabsorption. So the first one is antidiuretic hormone, which reabsorbs water, and then the second one is what? Parast hormone. Which reabsorbs what? It reabsorbs calcium. And the last one is aldosterone, which reabsorbs sodium. So that is that for reabsorption. So let's come in with filtration and call this video an end. So stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back. So finally, secretion. So, for secretion, it is just the process of adding to the filtrate during its passage through the renal tubule. So, and majorly, we have um, three electrolytes, I mean, three things rather, that are secreted to the what? To the filtrate. So, the first one is some drugs. Some what? Some drugs. So, during the passage of the filtrate through the what? Through the convoluted tubules, through, through the renal tubule generally. So, there is going to be what? There is going to be secretion. Secretion. So, there is going to be secretion of what? Of some drugs into the what? Into the renal tubule. So, and apart from that, hydrogen as well. Hydrogen is going to be what? It's going to be secreted. It's going to be added to the what? To the filtrate as it passes through the what? Through the renal tubule. And finally, um, potassium as well. Potassium is going to be excreted. So potassium, that's K. So potassium as well. So under which circumstance will this hydrogen be secreted and in what amount? So when the body acidity is high, if the acidity of the body is high, then there is going to be an increase in the what in the secretion of hydrogen. Because that will happen because we want to do what? Because we want to reduce the body acidity. So the hydrogen has to leave. So and after that, talking about the potassium. As sodium is being reabsorbed back into the bloodstream, the potassium will have to be what? To be excreted. So, potassium is going to be secreted and then it's going to pass out through the what? Through the collecting ducts. And finally, some drugs. So, although not all drugs is to get secreted, but drugs such as penicillin. So, penicillin. So, they used to find their way out through the what? Through the urine. And that is just what? That is secretion in the beads. So, and that is the end of this video. So, I thank you that you enjoyed this video. So, if you do, do make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time watching the video from DSSG Nation, do make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell button so we can notify you whenever we create a new video. Hi, guys.